Ah, the scoochie, aka the scrunchie. A vital step in my daily hair care routine. Nay, the only step in my daily hair care routine. These baddies, invented in the 60s, then widely popularized over the 80s, have taken the hearts of femme fashionistas all over the world. Over the years, people have tried to change them up by using different fabrics, playing with the sizing, adding trims, ribbons, jewels, but none of those redesigns compare to the one I'm about to show you right now. This right here is the Flower Power Scrunchie by Sandy Liang. I've been seeing them all over the internet, try to get my hands on one, but they are sold out. But also, they're hella expensive. They're upwards of $100 each. And you know, like, it's probably handmade, ethically made, all that stuff, but mm, no. Thankfully, I've been blessed with the skill of being able to operate a sewing machine. So today, we will be recreating the Flower Power Scrunch. I've seen some tutorials of people trying to recreate them, but they just don't look right. So we're gonna try to experiment a little today and do them three different ways to see if we can get a closer result to the original. For this project, you'll need fabric scissors, pins, paper, ruler, thread, elastic cloth, a sewing machine, and a writing utensil. Anyways, let's get started. <laughs> To create the pattern, all we need to do is blow up an image of the Flower Power Scrunchie and trace it. I recommend using a dull pencil as you don't want to ruin the device you're tracing on. Once that's done, use a marker to define your lines, cut your pattern out, then trace it onto some fabric. Flip the pattern over, trace, then cut your two pieces out. The fabric I selected is a bit boring, so to spice it up a little, I'm just gonna add this yarn to give it some texture. Why not just pick a fabric I like you as? Because I don't wanna waste my good fabric on something that, you know, might not work. This is, after all, our first attempt. If you are interested in doing this, all you have to do is lay the yarn down the way you'd like, pin the design in place, then straight stitch it all down. It's a bit time consuming, but I think the results are totally worth it in the end. Once you've got your pieces, match your good side to good side, pin it together, stitching the outside only. We wanna keep an opening so we can bag it out and have room to stuff it with the fluff. Before we bag it out, make sure to trim and slit your seam allowances. Because the shape is so rounded, we're gonna cut little triangles, making sure not to cut the stitch you just made. This will allow the fabric to move more freely and lay more flat without all that extra bulk from the seam allowance. It should end up looking something like this. Bag it out, be careful not to rip any of the stitches, then off to the iron we go. The best way to get a crisp, clean press with such a curvaceous project is to use a pin to pull that seam out. I like to get about three or four inches, then press. Repeat this method all the way around until you get the perfectly pressed flower shape. Now for the fluff. Use the opening we left to fill each petal with some stuffing. Once that's done, fold in the seam allowance. Pin it in place, leaving a little opening for the elastic then slip it shut. Grab your elastic, feed it through. If you're having a hard time holding the end of the elastic, simply anchor it down to the fabric with some pins. Once it's through, overlap each side of the elastic and use some Coban thread to secure it together. You could of course run it through a machine, but I couldn't get the angle right, so I'm just gonna hand stitch this. All that's left is to slip that open and close. Then you're done. All right, so in our last pattern, the shape was great, but there wasn't any scrunching going on. And since this is called scrunchy, we need the scrunch. So this time we're gonna 
create a straight pattern. We're gonna start with folding a strip of paper five inches per fold, then draw a line two inches up from the bottom of the page. This distance represents the distance between the inside hole to the corner of each petal. Then from that line, measure three inches up. This being the height of each petal from the corner markings. I use a roll of tape to draw a circle. From the end points of the circle, draw a line down to the two inch line. Double check your measurement to make sure it's the same on both sides. Then connect that point to the end of your five inch mark. Fold your paper back up, then cut along that curve. My paper wasn't long enough, so I only have four petals on this pattern, but no worries. I just have to move the paper over to trace out one extra petal as we want a total of five petals on each of the two pieces we'll be cutting out. I folded my fabric in half, good size facing each other, so I only need to trace out my pattern once. Add half inch seam allowance all the way around, then cut out your pieces. I attempted to use this cutting wheel that's been sitting in my toolbox for years that I've never used, and man, did I regret it. I recommend just sticking to the classic pair of scissors. Once that's complete, pin your pieces together. Straight stitch at the top and bottom, leaving openings on both sides. This will allow you to bag it out and add the stuffing. Before you do that, of course, trim down your seam allowance. I recommend cutting out little triangles as we did with the previous scrunchie to eliminate any extra bulk on the inside. Bag it out, then press your seams. This fabric for some reason did not wanna stay down no matter how much moisture I added. So we're just gonna to have to live with these not so perfectly pressed edges. The petals will most likely end up looking a bit squarish, but whatever, for the sake of my sanity, I've accepted my fate. Add some stuffing to each petal. Feed the elastic through. Stitch the ends of the elastic together with the machine or some Coban thread, then slip stitch the opening closed. This time around, we're gonna be doing something a little different. I wanna to try to have six petals instead of five. I like the volume and the size of the one we just made, so we're gonna to have to do a little bit of math to make six petals fit within the five petals. So if each petal was five inches wide, that would make the entire length of the pattern 25 inches. I like to work with nice even numbers, so for this six petal pattern, I'm gonna make each petal four inches wide, which would make the total length of the pattern 24 inches. We're going to do the same as the previous pattern and draw a line two inches up from the bottom of our page while also marking our four inch width by drawing two vertical parallel lines. Halfway between that width, mark a point three inches up from the two inch horizontal line. For a nice round shape, I use a protractor as a guide. Define your lines, then cut that pattern out. Since I'm using two different fabrics for this, I'm gonna cut each petal out individually. Because I'm not cutting this on the fold, I need to trace the pattern out twice to make one petal piece. Make sure to also mark the two inch horizontal line as this will indicate when to start and end your stitch. 
When drawing markings on your fabric, I always recommend putting them on your seam allowance to avoid it showing up on your finished product. Cut out your pieces. Then do the same with your second fabric. Lay your pieces out, then pin them from notch to notch. Once that's done, go ahead and straight stitch it all down. Press your seams open, then fold the petals in half, good side facing good side. Pin each petal down again from notch to notch, then stitch it all down. We're gonna do the same thing as before, cut down the seam allowance all around, bag it out, press it, add the fluff. The last one was too puffy, so this time we're gonna go with half the amount of stuffing per petal. Feed the elastic through. Secure the elastic. Then slip stitch the opening closed. These turned out so well. If I had to make another one, I'd definitely use method number three, but alter it so it only has the five petals. It's just cuter that way. Other than that, I give this project a personal rating of 10 out of 10 as I'll be wearing these constantly. But for the recreation accuracy rating, I'd give it an eight out of 10. Not one of them looks exactly like the original flower power scrunchie, but honestly, close enough that you wouldn't really notice from a distance. Thank you for watching this video. Smash the like button if you found this at all helpful. If there's something you'd like me to try to DIY, just let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for videos every Thursday and I will see you next week. Bye.